I want to share some fishing tips with you that would be applicable in a camping situation or in a survival situation should you find yourself near one of north central Florida's larger rivers. I took a kayaking trip down the Okawaha River this summer and while camping I found a deep hole with a sandbar next to it that was good for swimming and I also found that it was full of big brim, big bluegill and red bellies, that sort of thing. I figured, well hey, if I could just fish here and catch some fish, this would be a great way to get my dinner and I wouldn't have to dip into any of my camping food. Well, using a little ultralight that I had with me, as well as some Berkeley power bait, the same bait that I used in my survival pan fishing video from springtime, I was able to catch a fish pretty quick. Unfortunately, what I found was that the remaining brim, and there were many dozen big brim in that hole still, would completely ignore my bait. In fact, they would swim away from it really quick when it would get close to them after catching that first fish. I switched to a cane pole, I took my bobber off, I took the sinkers off, I tried to do everything I could to make the bait flow down the water column naturally and the fish would just run from it. However, when I would then take the bait off the hook and throw it out there, they'd gobble up the bait just as quick as I could throw it on top of the water. This suggested to me that these fish were highly pressured and that I would need to change it up in order to catch them more efficiently. I got some advice from my dad, who does a lot of river fishing. I also consulted an old buddy of mine from high school who went on to become an expert fisherman in his adult years. I also checked around on one of the Florida outdoor forums and got a little bit of advice. A theme that kept coming up was to switch over to a low visibility line, like either a red line or fluorocarbon. Another thing that came up from my dad was use bread balls. I had forgotten that when I was a child, I used to always catch my brim using bread balls. You know, not nothing fancy, just bread balls. Well, my cousins and I went back to camp at this same spot this past December, and we couldn't catch the fish fast enough. Uh, I switched to a fluorocarbon using bread balls. They used a red line using canned corn, of all things. And the canned corn, to my surprise, did really well, as did the bread balls. You can see here, as soon as we drop the line into water, uh, we would hook up with another fish. This particular fish is what we call a red breast or a red belly. I'm not sure if they have a official name different than that. Also note my cousins were using a bobber and a sinker while I was just using the line by itself with no sinker or no, no bobber, no anything. And uh, we all seemed to catch about the same amount of fish. It seemed to be it was the line and the bait that was making the difference. This is actually, that's actually a stump knocker there. Let me also point out the way my cousin is holding the fish. Whenever you handle a brim, you need to hold it in such a way that it will not poke you in the hand with its sharp spines it has on its back. The way you do that is you, you grip it from the top and use your fingers to slide down uh, the length of the fish going head first and that will actually keep those spines closed so they won't open up in your hand. As you can see, we're catching them one after the other. Look how pretty this one is. This is a big red belly my cousin caught. This was probably catch of the day just because it was so pretty. Now just for giggles, I took out some of my Berkeley Power Bait again. Now this is not the worm flavor or the worm cut. This is actually a what they call fr fish fry, which actually just looks like a little green grub tail. I caught one fish with it. And then after catching this first brim, which was a real nice bluegill, the fish stopped biting. How about that? After 10 or 15 minutes of no bites after this brim, I went back to my tent, got some bread, came back, started using bread balls again, and started catching fish again, about as quick as I could put the line in the water. 
to make these bread balls, simply take some processed bread. You know, a white bread works best, but I'm actually using wheat this trip. Um, buy it by the loaf, take out a few slices, tear off a little bit of the slice, about, you know, about a, a pinch. Put it in your mouth, roll it around in your mouth, then take it out and roll it into a little ball. It's real important that you put it in your mouth. That saliva helps make it sticky and it'll stick to your hook. Also, let me note a secret to catching fish like this. Yes, it's the bait. Yes, it's the line we're using. But ultimately, the reason these fish are here is these fish are congregating around an established campsite. These fish have learned to associate humans with food as well as humans with danger. They're waiting for us to throw scraps out into the water. That might be one reason why bread balls work so well. But it, again, it's not just these fish. It's fish on every river I've ever fished since I was a child in northeast Florida. It's just something I forgot until my dad reminded me of it. So, moral of the story, when you make it out on a camping trip or a canoeing, kayaking trip down the Florida River, you want to catch some fish, or catch some brim at least, bring some bread with you and some light tackle. I hope this video has been informative or at least fun to watch. I most certainly had fun making it. We ate very well that night in camp. We had a good fish fry. Thanks for watching.